All right, y'all. Bostonian plays video games, Fallout 76. Um, probably going to try The Observer uh, at some point. That sounds right up my alley. Sounds like a, 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 what do you call it, cyberpunk kind of thing, AI kind of thing. And then, of course, uh, The Outer Worlds when that comes out. But still having still having a good time at Fallout 76. Coming out with great, uh, you know, con- well, I don't know if it's great content, but coming out with more and more content, uh, DLC type things, and, uh, you know, really uh, using j- the map itself as kind of like a canvas to add more content. So, you know, that's cool. So, but anyway, uh, I wanted to talk today about public discourse, uh, reality, and uh, a guy named Andrew Yang, okay, who's running right now for. Uh, president and um, uh, what, what, what was I going to say the uh, so as far as public discourse is concerned I mean um, you know most of you know the stories that are on CNN and local news and stuff like that that's what I mean by public discourse like what are we talking about we're talking about you know Russia and we're talking about um, you know social justice issues and um, you know certainly equality and um, and racism and stuff like that those, those are the main I think uh, uh, main po- what the hell is this now a fucking tick okay um, let's see here now I lose my train of thought every time this fucking bullshit happens. Uh, by the way, I'm doing a um, the Rose uh, storyline here, so I'm trying to get a syringe. So how many of these fuckers are there? Uh, I'm trying to get the syringe or whatever. What am I supposed to do here? Flavors of, is that add a karma syringe barrel mode to Rose's syringer? Okay, so there you go. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so anyway, uh, what was that? Okay, so public discourse. Okay, so uh, and uh, you know, for the most part, I mean, public discourse is controlled. I mean, obviously, you have stories that that hit that no one could predict um, that become part of the uh, narrative. But for the most part, I mean, you know. Uh, we have, you know, a, a media system that that can, uh, you know, at least have control over what's being talked about and what isn't being talked about and stuff like that. And, you know, one of the things that Andrew Wang, I think, is uh, bringing to the table is this discussion of automation and, and universal basic income and, uh, you know, uh, worker displacement and, uh, you know, conversations I think that we need to be having. Uh, again, uh, artificial intelligence uh, regulation as far as the government's concerned. Um, now, of course, uh, he could be kind of serving two masters. One, of course, is to um, bring these... Bring these um, bring these subjects into public discourse, which I think is very important. Uh, But the other thing is, you know, uh, even in his uh, Harvard speech, uh, Mark Zuckerberg did go over the uh, necessity of universal basic income. So um, now the message is is being uh, spread even further. So it could also be just, you know, the way... Uh, what they think is the best idea, and let's get people used to uh, the idea of universal basic income. Let's see what they think. Um, let's see how they react to it. And of course, you'll have people on the uh, right side who will say that you know it's not um, it's not American, or you know people should be put to work, not rely on basically like a thousand dollars a month or something like that. Um, so. And I don't, you know, I don't really know how to feel about universal basic income at this point. I mean, it seems like kind of a utopian idea, in the sense that, and it, and it's, it still keeps people reliant on, uh, and, and they're experimenting with it again. I, I've stated before, but they're, they're experimenting with this, and I believe California, maybe Detroit, or something like that. But certainly, they are getting the ball rolling, um, and, and they, you know, to be honest, they have been for a long time. I mean. Um, even uh, unemployment services, all of a sudden, um, you know, two years ago, they started, uh, you know, the automated uh, message uh, system actually refers to people as customers. So you're on unemployment looking for work, and they're, uh, what the fuck? They are 
um, referring to people as customers, which I think is very interesting as well. So, and you know, the value underneath universal basic income is this need to continually get money and push it into, you know, the market. I mean, that's essentially what it is. I mean, you know, they can, they can, uh, cover it up. <clears throat> I don't want to say cover it up, but you know, they can promote it as something that is, uh, beneficial to the person, but you know, as as we all know, very rarely are they thinking of oh the population. I mean, they're thinking of you know other things and how it's going to benefit the economy as a whole. Which you know, it's not sinister in any way, but um, you know, it, it keeps. Uh, there we go, <clears throat> level thirty-seven. It certainly keeps people dependent on uh, government services and stuff like that. Which uh, you know, in this uh, short film, that's. Um, in the process of being completed at this point that I that I did, uh, it's called Invasion, and it does explore universal basic income as it's uh, you know basically as it's been, uh, if it had been um, implemented like let's say five years ago, and what are people doing now? Well, I mean you know there is some uh, in my opinion there is you know the potential to not be worried uh, financially and be able to have, you know, certain freedoms to, and that's kind of, I like that, uh, certain freedoms to create and um, innovate and, uh, you know, as as Mark Zuckerberg kind of uh, promoted it, you know, it would be uh, better because, you know, people could become entrepreneurs and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, with more time and stuff like that. But really the character in Invasion is basically just, you know, in a system of economic slavery where, you know, he's not using it as a means to give himself more time and create. He's basically, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, and the other thing that's happening is that, you know, more services or actually more businesses in the marketplace are still striving for to take to, you know, separate you from the dollar. And, uh, you know, and, and in this world, the world that I created for the film, there's, a, you know, a virtual marketplace and, you know, a lot of people spend most of their time in the, in the virtual world, spending money in the virtual marketplace and stuff like that. So that's where their universal basic income is, uh, is being spent. And um, also within the short film, um, there's what's called positive housing. So we do have this kind of FDR um, I don't want to say utopia, but we're taking one of FDR's ideas and, and AOC's ideas now and giving people housing, um, but they have roommates, you know, like, so you go to a lottery or you enter a lottery and, you know, whoever you get, you get. So you are living, you know, rent free because, uh, you know, within a certain tax bracket, um, you... Uh, qualify for this type of thing uh, but again it key I, I think it keeps people unstriving especially if like you know they lose hope eight months into it like you know the first month of getting universal basic income the individual is going to have all these ideas and dreams it's like oh i'm only going to be on it for a month and then i'll get off and i'll get a job and or or i'll use that money to kind of work from home and build up something you know online or whatever and then it certainly, and then it becomes kind of a, also a state of uh, hopelessness if, if, if things aren't, you know, going the way that, you know, the person wants them to go. Uh, and then it becomes, you know, kind of like, I don't want to say an open air prison because that is uh, very, you know, kind of very negative. But it certainly uh, becomes something that's like, oh, you know, I rely on this, a lifestyle is created and blah, blah, blah. So... Um, so that's that. And then the other thing, you know, that I want to talk about is, you know, uh, uh, public discourse versus reality. And, and you know, again, uh, invasion kind of goes over this in, in a, a, a little bit. And it's basically about, uh, okay, for example, I, I read this book called Flash Boys, and it's by Michael Lewis, who wrote uh, Moneyball and the big short and uh you know obviously a very good writer and one thing that dawned on me that i implemented into invasion uh was something that was was spawned by something that he wrote was like hey look you know our idea of uh wall street is still people on the new you know on the floor of the new york stock exchange waving tickets around and blue coats and stuff like that but what it really is is a small black box in new jersey and what he means is it's just a small black box processing data uh, making decisions outside of New York, and um, and of course the the book goes, you know, it's all about wait, the placement of the, uh, it's called Flash, uh, 
um, what's it called? High frequency trading. Um, that's why it's called Flash Boys because it's flash trading where you're trying to get that machine the closest um, to the source of uh, information so that that black box gets the info before anybody else. Um, so it's a whole game that's going on. And actually, there was a temporary market crash that really no one talked about. I think it was only like, you know, maybe four or five hours. I believe I, I read the book probably like two years ago. But it was a result of, you know, these black, you know, the, the, the processing of uh, data uh, to, influ to make decisions to, uh, on the market. Um, and it's like, oh, uh, well, let's forget about that, you know, and then they didn't talk about what's actually going on, which is these small black boxes now. Um, and that's what I mean by, okay, well, what's in public discourse? Okay, well, we have, you know, what's going on with, uh, Russia and we have what's going on with, uh, um, you know, whatever else you want, whatever other story is really outside of the ones that are like natural disasters and unfortunate shootings and stuff like that, which is, you know, nothing that is not really a narrative it's more of just you know actual happenings that need to be reported on um uh that there is another react there is a conversation that's not being had so we have the conversation let's say with russian interference and stuff like that but then there are other conversations again like universal basic income or um automation and where it's going and you know what's going to happen to you know a workforce uh, once it's hit with automation and um, what's going to happen to Target employees and Walmart employees who are already implementing uh, more machine-based uh, services. So, you know, Walmart, for example, is experimenting with the same thing that Amazon did. You can basically just go around the store, um, you know, uh, scan it with your phone and purchase the item and not worry about, you know, a cashier or, or waiting in line and stuff like that. Now, obviously, that's going to be more convenient, but again, it's it's, you know, taking away the uh you know the cashier jobs and stuff like that so where do you go you know what other jobs are there like that and um you know uh will we be able to train people um for the new uh technologies that are that are being invented so uh, so meanwhile, in San Francisco, there's all types of goals and, and I'm, you know, I use the term agenda very loosely because, you know, I don't want them. I don't want you to think there's anything sinister behind that. I'm just saying they have their own kind of visions and goals that they're striving towards that are really not in uh, the discussion at this point. Uh, it hasn't expanded to everybody talking about it. And you know, for for the most part, I think that's just the way uh, human nature goes. Uh, you know, unless until it's like a real problem, no one's really thinking about it or talking about it. Then all of a sudden, it's like, oh shit, um, automation's here, self-driving trucks are here. Uh, what are we gonna do with, you know, uh, a bunch of truck drivers and you know stuff like that, and and cashiers and 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 all of those things that you know provide. Uh, not only not only financial uh, benefits, and I know like a lot of people out there, and I've been there myself, um, you know, working two jobs and trying to make ends meet and stuff like that. Um, you know, we'll just have the universal basic income, but like that's okay. So that's who they are. They're just going to rely on the universal basic income, and then what? They're going to have to like free. They'll become freelancers, and you know, so basically unionized. Uh, I'm, I know I'm kind of all over the map, but, you know, obviously you can see what that would do to unionize labor. It's basically over. I mean, you know, <clears throat> you're going to individualize almost everyone because they're on universal basic income. They don't have like a, a OK, so where the fuck am I supposed to go here? You know, they don't have like a collection of people who. OK, so what am I supposed to do? Where is this shit? Um they don't have a collection of people where they can get together and say, hey, look, we don't like the way things are going here. Um, is it this stuff? Like, where is this leading me to? It says I got three, four, three, two, one. Okay, but I've already interacted with this woman. Um, so, you know, and ba so basically that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about today. I want to talk about Andrew Yang kind of bringing these things up to the table, which I think is a good thing. But then again, you know, I think maybe the negative side is, you know, start, you know, Mark Zuckerberg started talking about this and it could just be uh, uh, an, a 
promotion to get these things into motion universal basic income so not that this is a radical idea but start getting people the population used to this idea of universal basic income and not really uh, andrew yang i think is doing a pretty good job at explaining why that would even be um necessary as far as you know what's coming uh in a, in, a, in the technological sense um and then again, I wanted to talk about, well, what is our version of reality here? What, how, do, how do we still see the world and how is it promoted to us? Like what? Like, OK, so we still think that on the New York Stock Exchange, it's just and you, you see it. You can see it every day, too, on like Fox Business or something like that, where th that is the case where people are still on the floor ringing the bell and, and stuff like that. But I mean, the, the, the true reality is like, you know, people relying on the, the, pro the processing of large amounts of information and trying to trade, uh, be the first ones uh, to the to the seat as far as uh, information is concerned and and uh, high frequency frequency trading and stuff like that so so it's very interesting that we can still kind of as a population be in a archaic um st well still be talking about things that have already lost their relevance you know and that's part of the bread and circus i think too and that's part of the distraction is that keep people you know if you can keep people talking about things that have already lost their relevance um you know then then you can continue to carry out and again i don't i want to i don't want to you know use these terms as something that's sinister or whatever but you know if uh, for example if you, let's say you had a lemonade stand all right so if you kept people working in the lemonade stand and then you developed you know something new and you just wanted to keep keep everyone away from it until you were sure that this was the way to you know that this was what what you wanted to put on the market like a hyper lemonade or something um then you would just keep keep people drinking the other lemonade until you were until you were ready to present the other one um so it's kind of the same thing you know so um so the and and you know and a lot of stories i'll tell you i mean a lot of stories just don't really hit the CNNs of the world. I mean, you know, there. If you go onto YouTube, I mean, there are documented instances where you know AI has been able to not not only think for itself, but communicate with satellites that are, you know, in space or whatever, and be able to rebuild itself. And the person couldn't shut it down. You know, I mean, th this is the way that th these are the other experiments that are going on. That obviously they don't want to freak out the population, but you know, these are things that are that are happening so so um so that's what i mean between public discourse and what a, what's actually you know the reality of the situation so um so anyway that's it and uh have a great one